Welcome to another edition of Interruptions. I'm your host, Otis Smith. Today, I am blessed to have in my presence one of our greatest treasures in the United States, and especially to the African-American community. If it wasn't for her and her family, I would still probably be having to use what they said, the colored bathroom or the colored uh, water fountain. She stood beside her husband, uh, Dr. A.D. King. She is a beautiful woman of God, full of grace, a virtuous woman. I'm talking no other than Dr. Naomi Ruth Barber King. How you doing, love? I'm doing just fine, thank you. And I'm so glad uh, and thank you for having talked to me today. Uh, no, thank you. I, you know, I tell people I, I, I have people on the show because either I'm a fan or I've always wanted to talk to them. And I saw a documentary uh, on uh, uh, on um, A.D. King uh, that Ed Gordon did uh, last weekend. It came out last weekend and it prompted me. I want to sit down and have a conversation uh, with you about you and uh, your late husband, um, A.D. King. And I wore, I'm gonna change my background here for a second because my first question for you is, when did you uh, meet uh, A.D. King? I am met uh, my boys, if you allow me, the Reverend A.D. Williams King, I met him. Uh, when I was only 13 years old at wow. the YWCA in Atlanta. Okay, okay. And what, what um, as you guys began to date, or as my grandmother would say back in the day, courting, as you guys began to court, what, how did you know he was the man for you? How did you know he's the one? Without a shadow of a doubt, uh, I knew he was the one because he was very smart, funny, intelligent, and sweet. We shared so many things of interest in common. It was indeed a love made in heaven. Oh, wow. We all should be so, so lucky. I told someone... Uh, you know, I didn't spend, I didn't waste any time asking my wife to marry me. Oh, uh, I, I, it was so, it, I knew she was the one so bad uh, <laughs> that I just called on the phone and said, what are you doing at the end of this year? We need to get married. <laughs> <laughs> what was, what was it like, you know, I was born in 1971. So, you know, that the, 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 the whole Jim Crow, the whole, you know, that 60 eras had just passed. What was it like for, for you and Reverend um, A.D. King during the, the segregation time? What was that period like? Because, because of you all, like I stated before, I didn't have to be forced to go to, you know, use a, a Black bathroom or I couldn't live in this neighborhood because of you. What was that like uh, moving through that time of segregation? Well, let me just um, answer that as I, as I really feel it. Sure. Well, uh, uh, first of all, as, uh, as, as far as I am concerned, uh, where segregation is, is concerned, you know, this was uh, the saying about if you're black, you get back. If you're white, you are right. And so for me, mm -hmm. uh, I never had to even uh, worry uh, about segregation for a lot of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, uh, God gave me a mind and I thank him for it. And, and as far as segregation is concerned, I made up a decision that I didn't have to do or uh, go in anything that uh, was segregated where you had to go in the back or back doors and, and all that because uh, I could just do without and not participate. And so, uh, you know, why would you go in places and then you know 
that you we couldn't go unless you were in the front door. So I just shone that. I never worried about that. That segregation never bothered me. Oh, okay. So your 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 thing was if you can't go in the front door, then I'm just not going to go to that place at all. Because uh -huh. I see another thing, you know, uh, Daddy King, as we all call and always yeah. love that. Uh, Daddy King would not allow any of us to participate in anything and that was a great intentionally, you know, and so uh, having said that, I'll just give you one example, you know, okay. of what I was meaning or uh, I was reading. Um, you know, uh, when my boys, A.D. and I were uh, dating and all, 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 I decided that uh, that was a movie of showing that was called uh, Blue Skies. And so I wanted to go see this movie. And so that's so I said, uh, hey, they said, I want to go see this movie. And uh, Blue Sky, he said, well, Naomi, you know I loved you. He said, but I just cannot take you. We're just going to see this uh, Blue Skies. He said, because my daddy would kill me. Well, I would have you know that at that time, the Fox Theater was segregated, and uh, on the outside of the building, there were steep uh, stairs that you had to go up because whites went in the front door on the front side, and blacks had to go on the back side up those steep stairs to go up. So as I was ascending the stairs, there came a, a quick rain. And so my mother always dressed me beautifully and all, and I was all dressed up with my pretty dress starts and all, and I was mm -hmm. walking up the steps and that came a quick rain. And when, by the time I got to the top of the stairs, I was drenched, I was wet, you know, and, and I was mad, you know. And so uh -huh. I went on in the movie and I sat there and I really could not concentrate uh, too well on that because I was wet. And then I just decided that uh, I better get out of here. I'm not going to get out of here. So I did. I left. And when I left, uh, I called A.D. and he came and picked me up. Okay. And so I was wet and mad and I said, A.D., I said, look how wet and mess I am. He said, no better for you. He said, because you had no business to go new way. <laughs> and so that was just one example of how we dealt with segregation on whatever the particular uh, issue was. And like mm -hmm. I said, I have never felt segregated in my life. That I'm, well, I'm glad that you guys, you know, made sure that you know if a place was segregated, then you guys just didn't participate because you you knew you was worth more than going through the back door or going, you know, using a separate bathroom or whatever. So thank you yeah. for that example. Um, can you tell me what kind of husband and father? Uh, Reverend A.D. King was? Oh, yes. A.D. was a good father and an excellent husband. He treated me like a queen. I could never have asked for anything better. He was my Boaz, as I said that. that. A.D. was a pastor of four different churches, and I was first lady with the four uh, chapter. He was a prophet. A.D. Uh, was an icon, as I said, in his own right, and he never uh, had a problem uh, with uh, being the brother of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and ML as we talk, he never had a, a problem with that because in any situation, whatever that ML uh, could not do or would not do, mm -hmm. he turned it over right to AD and AD carried out the mission. And so that uh, AD never had a problem. He knew who he was, he knew whose he was. All and right. He, so he just handled it like a champion. That was my Boaz. 
he, you know, the, the thing that always uh, brought so much joy when I saw with AD, I knew they were brothers. So, of course, they, you know, they look alike. But it was eerie that they they sound, you know, just in a regular voice talking. AD and MLK sound the same. Like it, when I listen, yeah. unless I have my eyes open, I don't know which one is talking. <laughs> 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 okay. And I learned AD was the only one. I'm, I mean, as far as that I heard, I'm not saying he was the only one, but AD was the only one I heard always called him Mike. Say that again. I said AD was the only one that I heard that called uh, Martin Luther King Mike. You know, he did, he never said Martin from things that I've seen or whatever. He always said Mike. <laughs> uh, well, well, as far as I'm concerned, what I know, we've all affectionately always called him Al. Yeah, and I and that that is and, and I like what you what you stated far as. Uh, AD was comfortable in his own skin. He knew who he was and mm -hmm. he wasn't worried about, you know, whether he was getting the spotlight or if a lot of people knew who he was. Long as he did what God called him to do and what he was asked to do within the, the civil rights movement. And it takes a strong man that knows himself in order to do that. That's so true. That's it. And I, 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 I always uh, different things that I've heard about AD. And this is why I wanted to sit down with you, because I want people to know that AD was just uh, he was instrumental in the movement as well. And and he had a part you and he had a part in helping us get to a different place than where we were as a black community. Uh, what made you guys stay so committed to the movement because of you, because of knowing how dangerous it was and how the opposition, right, didn't want us to advance further? How did you guys stay so committed in the midst of danger? Well, as I said, uh, when, that AD was a prophet. Mm -hmm. He was an icon in the civil rights movement. He played significant roles in the movement in Birmingham. Our house was bombed in Selma. He hired a plan from Purdue University and brought over a hundred people from Louisville to Selma for the Selma demonstration. His office, uh, in the Zion Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, his, uh, his was bombed and the sidewalk chapel was bombed in Louisville, which is now uh, called Muhammad Ali Boulevard. Uh, they, they contributed to the passage of the 19 uh, Civil Rights Act due to the demonstrations in Birmingham. Now it was uh, and uh, those demonstrations, as I said, mm -hmm. led to the bombing of uh, our home. And I would just like to, uh, if you will, allow me sure. to, to, tell, <laughs> to tell a story okay. about the bombing of our home in Birmingham, Alabama. It was um, late one night, about, oh, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And um, and I was seated in the living room in the, of my home, and uh, I had just decorated the uh, table of my day, been getting ready for Mother's Day dinner, which was there. And after I had finished uh, uh, those decorations, I was just sitting there thanking God for, you know, for all of His blessings and have you when. Um, uh, I noticed that my picture window began to crack mm. and uh, A.D. was in the bedroom working on his sermon and our five beautiful children uh, were in their rooms. I don't know whether they were asleep or not, but mm. uh, uh, at that point, 
when uh, I noticed that that picture when it had begun to crack, that was bomb number one. And so God would have it that uh, he brought A.D. up to the front of the house. And as uh, he opened the front door and looked up and down the streets and all, uh, he came over to me. He said, Naomi, he said, uh, he said, let's get out of here. He said it was uh, too quiet in here. He said, let's get him out of here. And so by the time he got me to the middle of the house and all, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, bomb number two went off and wow. so oh well as I stood there and we noticed that all of the front of that house was blown away so there again I was saying that the uh, passage of the civil rights act in 1964 that I will show again showed his iconic ways and the way he handled all of those demonstrations of that. And so while I'm talking about the bombing and all of that, I just mm -hmm. want to talk a little bit about those five beautiful children that they did sure. and I inherited. And I just kind of want to set the record straight, sure. uh, you know, for that so that uh, uh, my firstborn was yeah. Alvita King, who I think is known. Alvita King was my firstborn. And okay. Alfred Daniel Williams King uh, was the second one. And the second uh, was my son's second child. And then the uh, Alfred at that point was, uh, has passed away. And Alfred, uh, passed away simply because he just had uh, some health problems and okay. all of that. And he collapsed and then he was, by Alfred passed on. Then we had uh, Derek Barber, the third one, who is a minister and very active and plays his role in all of this. He well, that was that. And then the fourth uh, child was, the third fourth child was Esther Darwin. Uh, uh, which was a very active, and all of the children were, were involved and in, in, in support, and you know, along with their daddy on, from the children's stand. And, and Esther Darlene uh, passed away because she officiated while she was running, you know, running track. And the last okay. child, uh, Vernon Christopher King, who is uh, has passed away, and all that, and he had some health problems, and that is how he passed away. So all of the children were involved and active while they, while they were, they were uh, while those were alive. And so after that house was bombed, and when I think about all those uh, five beautiful children, all of, I thank God uh, that he spared all of us to continue the work that we had to do that was set on and be a great support in the children's father figure for the dad, the Reverend A.D. Williams King. I thank you for sharing that with me because it, it's a testament that the Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. And you guys are a living testimony to that. What are some of your fondest family gatherings? What what were some of the happy times as you all were together as a family? There were just so many that it'll take me a long time <laughs> to, tell you, to tell you about it. But uh, oftentimes, let me just in my way, mm -hmm. uh, during the day, the segregation when I was talking, you know, uh, by telling you about my segregation, there were a lot of uh, preachers in the family. And uh, during those times of segregation, as I said earlier, Daddy King would not allow none of us to participate in intentionally in anything that was segregated. I would have, uh, I'm a good cook, because my mama taught me to be a good cook. All right. I would have, uh, on Sundays after services and they got through preaching and all I would have them all come over to my house and then I would just cook uh dinner for them and then tell you a little bit about ML. ML 
uh, when I cook, it may have love liver and onion served over rice, and they don't like barbecue ribs, and they don't like barbecue steak. He <laughs> like collard greens, and he loved my sweet potato pie. So always oh. he would through the Sunday dinners and cooking. And then we would, uh, we would, we would attend plays sometimes, you know. And then, uh, yes. and then we'd go. We take had movies, and and now, uh, and then we would just go and and fellowship with friends from time to time, and have them over, and we'd have a good time. Wow, you, you, oh, you may when you said sweet potato pie, I got, I got excited. When you said sweet potato pie, I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> my my final question for you is um how close and i know they were but just in your own words how close were um ad and reverend ad king and uh mlk ad and ml first of all was inseparable they were as close as breathing and you know it doesn't get any better than that. Right. And so uh the main thing that touched upon my heart, you know, and all which shows that close the, between ML and AD was that on that uh day uh when L uh, when ML was fatally shot. Yes. Uh AD was on one floor. And Martin was on an upper floor. Right. And so I'm told that when uh, uh, the night before he was shot, AD and I was just uh, really fraternized having a time. And they had a pillow fight and they were just enjoying each other. And so I'm told that when the fatal shot uh, was fired and ML was killed, you know, and of course they rushed down and got uh, AD because he was there. Right. <laughs> Used it, and he was there. And so, uh, when he went up and was there, I'm told that uh, AD just broke down and cried, and they just could not. Uh, they just couldn't stop her. He was just almost hysterical. And uh, I would have you know as a return, as when you asked me how close and all, and I told you that mm -hmm. they were as close as breathing. Right. AD, after ML's pass, AD cried every night before uh, he went to sleep. I would always hold him in my arms and just talk to him, but he cried every night uh, since then I was died and he did so until he was until uh until he passed on his wealth. So finally then AD and Martin were inseparable and they were as close as breathing. Well I thank you I thank you for coming on the show and speaking with me. I just want to say to you I love you. Uh, I love you, you more. You you mean so much. You've done so much that we can't, you and your family, that we can't even thank you for. You guys did things that today people would not do in the face of adversity. And so I want to be able to say not only thank you, but I love you. And you are a queen and a treasure to us all. And thank God for you and your family. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.